Uh, and I haven't been sending her one because I never actually prepare presentations. I don't do PowerPoint, and it's not because it's a Microsoft product. <laughs> well, it's not only. <laughs> um, uh, it's mainly because I'm always more interested in what the audience wants to know than, than what I might have to say. And my, my wife explained this to me early on in our, our marriage. I had to give a talk, and I was really nervous. Like, I was really nervous. And, and she sat me down and said, well, all you have to do is focus on one thing you know that your audience doesn't know. And then it doesn't matter if they like you, if they laugh at you, it just doesn't matter as long as you've done your job conveying your one thing to the audience. Um, so I was actually chatting to her uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, and um, I, I was sort of talking through what I should tell you guys. And so she is asking me, okay, who are these guys? And that they're all brilliant academics, they're all leaders in their field. And, you know, so she says, okay, what do they want you to talk about? The, the future of the internet. I said, so, you know, what should I talk about? And her response was, don't go. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I've been doing, that's been my challenge, and that's why you haven't received anything from me. Um, uh, and I've decided that, that uh, there's one topic I might know a little bit about. At least I have a couple of fun stories about it. Uh, and it's, it's the concept of the free market. Uh, <laughs> you know, the one that George Bush is going on. And in fact, you know, because I like to challenge the audience a little bit, I figured I'd stand up here and defend George Bush. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> We're going to leave that alone. <laughs> I'm going to defend free markets. Uh, and the key thing to remember about free markets is they are not sufficient in the organization of human activities. And, and no thinking people, and I'll leave George out of this, uh, would ever try and argue that free markets are sufficient. Larry Lessig, who I, uh, I think is brilliant, talks about um, market failures, things that the Creative Commons needs to do because given that there is government legislation on the one side that isn't working very well, uh, how do you fix it? And that's a big part of why he has been working at this Creative Commons project for, I don't like that, 99 four and a half years. Sorry, four and a half years. Four and a half years. I'm very impressed, by the way, with those numbers. Like, there are four million pieces of content? Four. Fourteen. No, four years. Yeah, two million last year, four million this year. Holy cow. <laughs> uh, that, that, I ran a thing very briefly after our experience at Red Hat called the Center for the Public Domain. Um, uh, the mission to it, Mark Ewing and I funded this thing because we were worried about open source and we were saying, okay, what can we do to contribute back to all this huge open source community who had helped Red Hat become so successful? But every single open source project you could name was getting funded at the time, so we couldn't just do more software. So we did the reverse analysis. We said, okay, if open source fails, why will it fail? And our take on it was because our governments, you know, whether they were here in Brussels or in Washington or Tokyo or anywhere else, had come to equate intellectual property with the health of their technology industry. Ergo, if a little bit of intellectual property protection created a technology industry, a lot of intellectual property protection must be able to create an even bigger technology industry. Uh, and what was obvious from that for any of us working in the technology field is that pretty clueless. The analogy I use is, is vitamin C. I don't know how many of you, sorry, vitamin D. I don't know how many of you guys know this, but vitamin D, if you don't get any vitamin D, you get rickets or some sort of bone diseases. Too much vitamin D will kill you. So it's not that vitamin D is good or bad, it's that too much of anything will kill you and too much intellectual property rules, as, as far as I'm concerned, will kill you when you start looking at things like, you know, total control, the DMCA type things where, where you get thrown into jail just for discussing how to pick a padlock is the equivalent of the DMCA rules. Okay, so. I'm more than willing to agree, government has a huge role. And the role that, that I don't think the market will ever serve properly, much as there are some very big for-profit educational institutions, is education. 
Um, and so when I think of the internet, uh, I know for a fact that it's going to be market factors that are going to drive the future of the internet. Uh, so what do we have to do besides market factors, or along with market factors? And the other one is, of course, education. Uh, our society needs to become increasingly well-educated if they're going to answer any of the questions hypothetically sort of put up here this afternoon. And yet, the free market doesn't do most education well. And when you think about IP in the context of education, how many of you guys know this fact? Sonny Bono, you know, the guy who wrote my favorite song, I Got You Babe. I, I'd sing it to you, but <laughs> my wife would just force me. Uh, long story. Um, <laughs> all related to the fact that I genetically cannot sing. It goes back several generations. <laughs> um, anyway, so I got you big. One of the world's great pieces of music of all time. Written by Sonny Bono. So Sonny Bono retires from music and, you know, becomes mayor of, of some town in California and, and goes to, moves up the, the political chain, goes to Washington, D.C. as a congressman. And everyone sort of assumed that he was going there because he had nothing better to do and it was a way to keep himself busy in his retirement. The reality is Sonny Bono had a mission. And his mission was to make copyright permanent. So copyright had gone from whatever... 20 years at the end of the Second World War to 100 years today in the United States. And Sonny Bono wanted to make it permanent. His thesis being that um, I got you that he should be able to give it to his kids, who should give it to their kids, who should give it to their kids ad infinitum. I mean, if he had built a chair, why couldn't, you know, a, a carpenter can give his chair to his kids who can give them to their kids. What Sonny, of course, didn't pick up on the fact was you can't give the idea of a chair to your kids and their kids at infinite. And a song is actually an idea. It exists in our heads. It doesn't actually exist in real time. And this is where it comes back to education and why getting this stuff right and this kind of conference, I may not be able to contribute in any meaningful way, uh, is still nonetheless hugely valuable um, because it tries to balance between what we need to work as, as entrepreneurs in a free market the IP protections or copyright protections that allow the BBC to produce, to put, you know, whatever, half a million pounds into a show and with a, at least a modest chance that they might get a return on their investment before the BitTorrent guys spread it around the world and eliminate, maybe not the BBC, let's, let's pick a for-profit, you know, a producer of content. But we've got to protect the ability of producers of content to make money on their content. But... You know, it's as you guys are aware, copyright at 100 years, the original concept to copyright uh, was, of course, to protect Charles Dickens for 7 or 14 years. Uh, now, at 100 years, in fact, the way the copyright rules are written in the U.S., um, you now get copyright if you're an individual for uh, your lifetime plus 50 years. And the original concept to copyright, it was a social agreement between Dickens and the British public that he got protection for a bunch of years, and then his story fell into the public domain. That was the understanding. So copyright in the United States, and the whole concept, sorry, was to give him an incentive to write his next song. So copyright in the United States now gives you a 50-year incentive to write the next song 50 years after you're dead. And you just go, you know, what did, how is this going this way? And that's the whole problem. That's the problem I have, the reason I support the, the Creative Commons. It's the reason we have to get this stuff right. It's the reason we need to educate the guys in Brussels. Because you have to get that understanding of how the free market works, the, the, what the protections that the producers of content need in order to profit from their content so that they will make the investment versus what we as a society need so we can educate the next generation of Sonny Bonos. So, with that in mind, the, the two sort of uh, examples that I have is in 1995, if you remember, the Justice Department in the United States was suing Microsoft over monopoly practices. And if you remember, the argument was 
uh, or, or the, the solution was going to be they were going to break up Microsoft. For those of you who haven't been paying attention, that whole issue went away. They had a little consent decree, a, a consent decree where Microsoft agreed not to do some of their more nefarious things. But the Justice Department just folded their tent and went away. The reason they folded their tent and went away is the free market actually came up with the solution. And the solution was open source. Because open source could do things for the market that Microsoft couldn't do. It was just one more example. It was actually probably all of us at Red Hat. Our biggest single sense of, of reward was not the money we made at Red Hat. It was the fact that we were able to solve in the marketplace a problem that would have otherwise taken the Justice Department. To solve. And the, the other one is the inspiration of Loop, was actually the recording industry of America starting to sue their customers. So suddenly you go, holy cow, if the best the publishing industry can do is to sue their customers, they took Steve Jobs to invent iTunes to actually solve the problem that, that the, uh, the kids were using, or at least guys like me were using to download songs. I was downloading songs not because I need to save money but because I wanted one song on my hard drive, I didn't want 20 songs on a piece of plastic. When uh, Jobs invented iTunes, poof, suddenly you have a business. And that's the attraction to free markets, is what they will do is they will get people inventing the right solutions. Uh, but it does hard work. Free markets don't work by themselves. They work within a, a structure. Think of it as a football game. Actually, I was explaining this to one of you, and they said, do you, do you actually think this is just a game? And there's actually a real parallel with games, which is if there is not a set of rules, you can't play football. They're using the European term. Because where's the out-of-bound rules? What are you allowed to do to the other opponent? You know, how big is the goal? You need a whole bunch of precisely defined rules for a whole bunch of teams to play that game at a level playing field. You need the same rules in order to allow a free market to work properly. So when you see free markets not working properly, it's seldom the problem that free markets don't work. It's the problem that the set of rules that the government in the jurisdiction you're looking at, they haven't got the rules right. And on IP, I don't think we've got the rules right. But don't kid yourself that the future of the internet is going to be defined by altruism or by you know, some great invention. It's going to be driven by the Googles and the Yahoos and the guys who generate all this money and the venture capitalists who are funding the next generation of Googles and Yahoos. And that's why discussions of economics are so important because the economics will determine what we work on next. And with that, what questions do you have, Ben? You must have a question, given that I didn't submit a proposal. Some uh, comments on uh, the open source and the free market. 